Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Kai Anderson says we can retire on real estate. Today, we'll find out how. Kai, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, Kai, you've written a book called Retire on Real Estate. There it is. (laughs) That tells us everything. Um, Why did you write this book? I wrote this book because I was was actually having dinner with some friends one evening, and we were sitting around the table and talking, and the subject turned to retirement. And suddenly, it was like this dark cloud came over the room um, because they started sharing their fears that they would never be able to retire safely or that even if they did... How would they know that they weren't going to run out of money? Um, And it was in that moment that I realized I was sitting on a golden egg. I realized that with a handful of rental properties with mortgages that will be paid off in the next um, 15 years or so, I knew knew in that moment that I will retire and that that I I will retire with comfort and and self-sustainability. So that's when I decided that For my friends and for just society at large, I wanted to help get the word out about rental property, not necessarily a handful of rental properties, although people may feel so inclined, but even just one rental property to truly diversify when planning for retirement. And Kai, we should let our audience know, you are a real estate investor, you're a landlady, you also have a PhD, so you're not just somebody on late night TV uh, walking an idea, correct? (laughs) That's right. Okay. That's right. No, we're, we're doing this. Um, you know what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. We've been doing it for more than a decade now. Okay. Now, in your book, a Retire on Real Estate, you use a lot of chicken and egg metaphors. What's going on here? Is that your favorite uh, pet? <laughs> I have come to like chickens quite a bit, actually. You, you have? Okay. Book. <laughs> um, but, but actually, so what I, I view rental property like chickens because rentals provide... Uh, income month after month, just like chickens provide eggs day after day. And the thing is about the chickens is that if you contrast that to the typical traditional nest egg, where you build money up over, you know, your whole lifetime, and then when you retire, you start chipping away at that, and then you just hope and pray it's enough. That's in contrast to, that's the egg. See, that is in contrast to the chicken, where the chicken provides those eggs on an ongoing basis. And that's and that's what rental property does. I like that. That's good branding. <laughs> Thank you. Now, do you walk into your properties with a little shirt with a chicken on a corner rather than a golf club or a tennis uh, <laughs> racket? Well, I just had a chicken logo developed, so yeah. I might have to start doing that. No, I think that's cool. And Now that I understand it, I really like that idea, and I think that's great. And, of course, you know, we're all about branding today, so uh, why not, right? Yeah, and yeah, I do have a lot of... Uh, Almost too much, probably. Uh, a lot of chicken and egg metaphors and analogies in the in the book, now, um, but it makes it fun. Kai, the good news is that uh, a lot of our guests on the show, and we've been doing this show almost 30 years now, they're telling us we're going to live longer, and we're going to be around longer, we're going to be healthier, and all the new developments, which on one side is great. We're all very happy to hear that, but as you say, uh, we need a little money in there. And most of our uh, retirement accounts are good for us for maybe a few years, but if we really get practical, uh, and there's not enough there. <laughs> this, uh, that's right, and that's the terrifying thing, is that we can, we just don't know how long we're going to live. And, and you're right, that we are living longer and longer, and so that means we need to have more and more saved up, and that, you know, and then that doesn't even account for the, you know, the ups and downs in the stock market. Um, but if you build a sustainable thing on the side like rental property, it operates on a different um, playing field because it's income-based. It's a monthly income rather than buying at one price and selling for another and, you know, hoping that that, that the timing works out with your timing. Now, um, you know, we, we hear all about the 401ks and people are kind of forcing our hand that way and uh, don't depend on Social Security. Why do you feel they're uh, either not enough or bad? So I don't necessarily feel that they're either not enough or bad, but so they're not in, well, in terms of being not enough, they're not enough on their own because they don't provide that authentic diversification that rental pro- property provides. And um, there's many ways that I you know go into that, but um, 
But there's so many ways that rental property provides authentic diversification, which can be a good complement to, you know, your 401k. But the thing about the 401k is that it is, we've gotten here as a society by an like as an accident actually like it was never really thought out or planned or even modeled or tested we've just ended up with this 401k thing and now we all depend on it and it's become like pretty rote to us but really back in 1980 it was basically the brainchild of this guy named ted benna and he proposed to the irs he proposed just a little tweak to the tax code to benefit his his um his company the employee benefits firm and um so they went for it and then so they started his company started first in terms of offering this 401k and it was really initially meant for invest uh, in, um, employees who were the highest paid so they could shelter some of their income so that they and that in those days they had the pension they had social security and then they had this th- third leg of the stool which was the um, 401k but what happened is the company started realizing that they were this 401k thing was infinitely cheaper to provide than the pension. So they gradually and then you know it started accelerating but the companies just started all turning shifting either partially or completely over to the to, over to the 401k and abandoning the pension in and the pension. So that's how we've started to now we don't have the pen, many people don't have a pension anymore it's on the decline rapidly um, and we've all just sort of come to assume that the 401k is this wonderful thing that was you know that's been here forever but really it's only been here since like the mid 80s you know you make a great point there that I never thought of um, it really hasn't been it's, you know if it's a medicine or a food uh, we at least hope uh, some government agency tests it and says it's good for us or it won't hurt us or to the best of their knowledge with the you know the equipment they have it won't hurt us but we don't know what's going to happen when most people become 65 or 68 or 72 and right. except that i guess they do know that certain percentages have less than 30,000 or 50,000 or 75,000 in the 401k or the IRA and we do know that's not going to take us too far that's, that's correct, and that's that's what's so terrifying, and that's another reason why I felt the urgency. As soon as I started researching all this for my book, it just compelled me even further to get the word out. Um, but the um, I want to just mention that the Great Recession of 2008, that served as sort of like a test case for a lot of people who don't have pensions or, and were retired or were about to retire, and it, it you know, it failed. So a lot of people who... This is, um, you know, very sad, but a lot of people who at that period of time maybe had their 401k and then they sold because they were afraid of it not coming back and then now they really lost out. Well, yeah, I think that's a great point. And Kay, I'd like to mention to our audience, in case you're just tuning in, our guest today is Kay, spelled K-A-I. Am I saying it correctly? It's Kai. Kai, I'm sorry. Kai that's Anderson. Hi, Kai. Hi, Kai. Okay. <laughs> Kai Anderson. She's written a book called Retire on Real Estate. And Kai, I'd like you to tell our audience where we can get the book and if there's a website, we can find out more. Sure. Um, the website is getachicken.com, um, spelled exactly like that. And you can buy it anywhere online and uh, many bricks and mortar bookstores. But um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and many other online book sources will have it. And a lot of great ideas. Retire and, on real estate. You know, uh, just to challenge your mind a little bit and go out there and say, when am I going to retire? If I really want to enjoy that retirement the way we see those people, you know, there's always a nice older couple walking on the beach and they're so happy to get that 1% interest check from the local bank. And I'm saying to myself, you got to have a lot of money in the bank if 1% of exactly. interest is going to give you the beach house and that beautiful boat they get on, etc. cetera. Um, if you want to be realistic, Kai has some interesting ideas and obviously not everything is for everybody, but if this is for you, uh, it may get you exploring some avenues and getting together with a few friends, maybe opening up a group and uh, seeing if there's something you want to do here and make that retirement uh, a little um, more lucrative. Let's put it that way. Now, yeah, yeah th- and I also, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, um, I recommend in the book that people not necessarily read it in isolation. Um, you know, they can join up with a friend or colleague or put a little group together, but it's, it's a good book to read 
uh, with others, too. Now, Kai, are you recommending that uh, people buy something hands-on for their retirement, or is this part of a 401k or an IRA? I mean, does this go in there as an investment, the way we would buy a mutual fund or a bank account? So I am. Uh, what I am um, talking about is hands-on, like hands-on rental property, um, hands-on property management, unless you use a property manager, which is, you know, great for some people who just don't want to deal with it. Um, but it's definitely hands-on. But there's a lot of strategies to go about getting property, and some of them do include leveraging or doing it within, leveraging a 401k or doing it within an IRA or solo 401k, yeah, which I go into, you know, in depth in my book. But um, so sometimes you use those retirement vehicles, you leverage those existing um, you know, existing uh, eggs or chickens or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we go back to those chickens. I know you like those chickens, <laughs> but it, but it is uh, does bring out a great point. Now, um, does this provide diversification too? Yes. Um, yeah. There's three ways it provides diversification authentically, which you can't you know you don't get with uh, mutual funds and stocks and even the real estate investment trusts. And that is that first. Um, it operates on a t- the time scale. So instead of, like we already talked about, like instead of a pool of money that you use up, it's a stream. Or like I was saying, instead of a nest egg that you chip away at, it's a chicken. So that's the time scale. The second is the earnings premise. So with stocks and mutual funds and REITs, you buy at one price and then you wait and you sell at a higher price. Same is true for fixing and flipping sometimes too. So that is actually a higher risk type of real estate investing, in my opinion. Um, But in contrast, the rentals operate on a monthly income basis. So, yeah, it's great if they appreciate and then you can, you know, sell those at a higher price or refinance and do something with that money. Um, That is what I consider the frosting on the cake, but really it's about the monthly income to provide that diversification. And then the third way is a tangible, like, physical diversification. So instead of all your accounts that are like virtual, they're password accessible, password hackable. This we're talking about physical, real world accessible stuff. It's like your all your five senses are involved when you walk into a property. So it's, it's, I, it's I think that's that that's a great point that uh, you know you can see it, feel it, touch it. It's not um, a fund of stocks that you can't see or touch or feel. Right, they're right there. Um, and Kai, you said you, you've been doing this, so I mean, you can kind of tell us uh, kind of the lumps in the road, what to look for, what to watch out for. Am I correct? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and if I understand it correctly, what, I just want to repeat for our audience, what you're saying is not to give up the 401k, the IRA, or the pension if we're lucky enough to have it, anything like that. Absolutely. But this would be something in addition that we should uh, obtain and uh, obtain with a view of using it for our retirement income. That's right. I do want to add one small caveat, and that is that not all 401k companies or funds are, they're not all created equal. So another thing that I go into my book is how to know when your 401k is basically robbing you and when you know that it's good. Ooh, Um, they rob us? (laughs) Yeah, there's, yes. Yes, okay. (laughs) Something I learned in the process of researching this book, and again, I'm not a financial planner or anything, have no professional ties to any of the industry. But it, through my research, I discovered that this, the fees, you know, if you have fees that are one and a half or two percent, it sounds small, but it's not. It can take out half and sometimes even more than half of your account balance by the time you're ready to retire. I think that alone, even if we don't want to go into the real estate, but just kind of exploring this through your book, that alone would be a great lesson because I do know from other guests that they've told us just that difference in the fees can total well over a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars by oh, yeah. the time you retire. Yeah, it, it can easily take out a, a half half of your retirement. Um, but and so I do in my book. I do go into the uh, how to how to f- figure out what your fees are, how to um, analyze them, like the different um, online like free software, um, not software, but you know like various websites where you can um, look up your fees and 
analyze them and figure out how much you're losing and how much you will lose after 30 or 40 years. And uh, when we get to those golden years, this is definitely going to be uh, the, either the golden chicken or the golden egg, or it's not going to be so golden. Okay, Kai, we want to find out more from you, but at this point in the show, we like to remind our listeners that you're listening to The Secrets of... 